Hello, this is Peter Baker from VoiceOverMasterclass.com. If you're looking for a microphone to set up your own voiceover business and for recording scripts in your own home studio, what is the best microphone to buy? Well, first of all, let's quickly go through all the different types of microphones. The one I'm wearing here is used for TV. It's called a Levalier Lapel mic. It's very small because you don't want a huge microphone in front of presenters' faces for TV, do you? So the quality is good for TV work, but it's not good enough for voiceover because, in effect, it's an omnidirectional microphone. It picks up sound from everywhere. In effect, it's picking up the vibrations from my chest. For voiceover work, you need to get a microphone that is right in front of your mouth for quality voiceover work to pick up the quality and the nuances of your speech. Now, what's more, because maybe you're starting out and not buying a professional soundproof sound booth yet, you need to make sure the microphone doesn't pick up any sound from behind or on the sides. So that's why you don't want an omnidirectional microphone that picks up sound all round like here, but something that has only sensitivity at the front near your mouth. And you'll find these with a polar pattern, as it's called, like this one next to the omnidirectional one with cardioid microphones. It looks a bit like a heart, that's why it's called that. Sometimes you'll find them called unidirectional. They have a heart-shaped pickup pattern but mostly it picks up at the front. It's sensitive at the front, so it hardly picks up anything from the back or side. And if you tried to speak into it, it would sound, as we say, off mic. Now, a microphone like this, the Audio-Technica 4041, will pick up from the front and is great for certain music uses, but it's not sensitive enough for us voiceovers. It has a very small capsule inside. It's OK, but it's not great. Us voiceovers need microphones that have a large diaphragm capsule inside that can pick up the subtle vibrations of every nuance of our wonderful voices faithfully, and also has a unidirectional response pattern, as I say, picking up at the front. That's why you need to look at microphones like the ones I'll recommend here. You'll need to search for large diaphragm condenser microphones Ignore ribbon, ignore dynamic microphones, ignore lip microphones, they're for football matches or anything like that. But now there's an extra complication. What is a USB microphone you may have heard about? You get those in large diaphragm. Yeah, yeah, well, look, basically, you get a cable that plugs from the mic directly into your computer. The computer recognizes it and it works straight away. Great, hey? But actually, it's not. A USB microphone can be good if you're just starting off in voiceover, but they are often less sensitive, a little bit more hiss, a bit more background noise, and I honestly think you would be better off with a microphone with a good old-fashioned XLR connector on. So here's a picture of a USB microphone connector, and here's one with an XLR connector. Look for one like this. Having an XLR microphone will give you much more flexibility. You'll be able to plug your microphone into an audio mixer, a solid state recorder, any other equipment that you may want to buy one day, like an all in one hardware podcast mixer or something, or a PA if you're going to give a speech at a hide corner or something. I don't know. Now, you won't be able to do that with a USB microphone. The versatility of XLR microphones over USB microphones, along with their generally higher price to sound quality ratio, make them absolutely the better choice for the voice actor. However, the disadvantage of an XLR microphone is you need to buy something else as well. You need a USB audio interface box as well. You need to power the microphone with 48 volts, and you need to turn the analog signals into digital ones for the computer to understand. But that's OK. We all have these boxes as voiceovers. They're not massively expensive. And these devices have headphone sockets and other controls, all very useful. And I'll look at USB audio interface boxes in another product review. So to sum up, I recommend for voiceover work a large diaphragm condenser microphone, one that's not USB, in other words, a traditional analog microphone with an XLR socket on, and one that has a cardioid or unidirectional polar pattern to pick up your voice the best it can. So here are my recommendations. The AKG P420 is absolutely amazing for the price. I've bought a couple of these for recording music, choirs, 
and some TV shows out on location. And honestly, the quality is superb in my voiceover booth as well, where I've used them. And I find it very hard to notice the difference between the voiceovers recorded on one of these and my classic trusty Neumann U87, which was about $2,000. If I had to be really picky, it's not quite as sensitive, not quite as good as getting the rich resonance, but for $200 or so, and that includes a mount and a metal case, you won't be disappointed by the AKG P420. A microphone that's slightly cheaper and also a good choice if you can't find the P420 in stock anywhere is quite a recent microphone. It tries to bring back the warmth of the classic vintage microphone. It's made by TechZone. It's called the Stella X2. Never heard of it, you're saying. Right, well, you've heard of it now. It comes in a metal box, like the AKG. You get a cradle with it as well to stop vibrations from the desk, boom stand, or whatever. It's a lovely design. It's very, very well made. Metal that's heavy. Gold inside it for the contacts. Some excellent technical specifications. Now, a lot of people are talking about this mic. Check it out. Even though you probably never heard of TechZone, I tried one of these out for a week. I was incredibly impressed. My final recommendation is a microphone that's been around for ages. Extremely popular with people who don't want to splash out a lot on a microphone. It's the AT2020. Audio Technica AT2020. Nice and sensitive. Maybe a little too sensitive in the lower frequencies. You do have to uh, have a decent pop filter with it. But for the price, it really is superb for voiceover work. Particularly, as I say, you don't want to spend too much to begin with. But you will impress many clients using this in your voiceover booth if you've got all the acoustics sorted out as well. But that's for another video. It doesn't come with a shock mount cradle, a fancy metal box or anything like that. But if you just want a decent microphone for less than, what, $100 or so, you can't go wrong with this, the AT2020. Now, even though I have these three microphones I've recommended physically here in my studio today, I can see one of them over there. There's really no point me trying them out for you on this video because you won't be able to hear the difference. You really won't. Nobody would. I'm not insulting you. I don't understand YouTube videos, for example, where people do microphone checks and shootouts, and you can't tell the subtle differences after the sounds being compressed over the internet, coming out of all sorts of different loudspeakers and headphones. Yes, you can compare specifications and stats. That's not the same as actually listening with your own sensitive ears in your own studio. You just need to take recommendations from people like myself, professionals who have been in business for many, many years, and then buy from a company where, if you're not happy with it, if the microphone doesn't reflect the full range and potential of your voice, you can swap for another one. That's really the best way to go, I think. I hope you find all this useful. Now, to find links and more details of all our product recommendations, go to voiceovermasterclass.com and click top right. Thanks very much for watching.